be to God. Our today's word comes from the book of Judges chapter 6 verse from verse 22. It says when Je- when Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, "Alas, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face." But the Lord said to him, "Peace. Do not be afraid." You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar of the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it stands in Ophra of the Abyssalites clan. The same night, the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of an altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height, using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down. Offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him, but because he was afraid of his family and the town's people, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning, when the people of the town of the town got up, there was Baal's old demolished with the Asherah pole beside it cut down, and the second bull sacrificed on the newly on the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told, Gideon son of Joash did it. The people of the town demanded of the Joash, bring out your son. He must die because he has broken the Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. But Joash replied to the hostile crowd around him, are you going to plead? Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. If Baal really is a god, he can demand himself when he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. So people so because so because Gideon broke down Baal's altar, they gave him name Jerubabal that day, saying let Baal contend with him. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, here on earth as it is there in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. As we forgive those sins against us, lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil ones. For there is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to God. So our today's word is talking about breaking the generational altars or ancestral altars altars, and rebuilding the new altar of the Lord God, the altar that surpasses any other altar. For us to exist, for us to work for the Lord, there are altars that we must break for us to exist or to do the work of God. So in introduction, I will go very fast. We are saying that um, in Judges we have this man called Gideon. Gideon was a servant of God just from the childhood. And we are saying that before he met the angel, it was during the time when Israelites were fighting. Were, uh, had this the generation after 40 years. Now they have gone into another sin. They sinned against God by worshipping the Baal prophets or the Baal gods. Those are the Asherah, the woman god, and the Baal, the male god. Those are the gods of uh, Amorites. When they settled in that land that God had given them, they did not worship God, but they started worshiping Asherah and Baal gods. Something that made God very angry, and he handed them into the hands of Midianites, and Midianites united together with Amalekites and Eastern groups and started fighting Israel. So Israel was under war 
with all those communities that surrounded them in Canaan. And by doing so, God had given that, he had given them in the hands of enemies. And when we look for Midian, Midian, Midian is a son of Abraham who was given birth by the housemaid, that is Keturah. Keturah gave birth to Midian, and Midian belongs to the family of Israel. Israel and uh, Midian are children of Abraham, generation of Abraham. So God allowed the woman, the child, children of the housemaid to come and fight or put uh, discipline into the real children of the home, the legal children of the home. These are Israelites. So when Israelites made a mistake, God allowed the enemies and the surrounding and even the family to fight them so that they can come back to their senses. That's how God had done it by that time. Then we are saying that as we move ahead, we find that we have this... Uh, we have uh, God now had sent the angel, no, the prophet, to come and remind Israelites that after 40 years I brought you here. Now you are the same as your own grandchildren, grandfathers, whom I took and snatched from the hands of Egyptian, brought them here, and now you are, you are fighting and you are worshipping the Amorite God, whom you should not worship and live in me. So a jealous God, a God who doesn't want to be compared to any other God, a God always almighty, could not withstand it, and so therefore he handed them into an oppressive government of the Midianite. So a Midianite came and destroyed everything that Israelites were having, destroyed their homes, destroyed their food, destroyed their animal sacrifice, and even slaughtered them and destroyed the camp there. So Israelites had nothing, but they were starving, and they were under the mercy of the of, uh, Amalekites and Midianites who had come to destroy each and everything and they had nothing. It was during this time that God brings in the idea of Gideon. Gideon, who is the only man who has been mentioned in this book, who was working during that time when others were afraid, hiding in the caves, hiding in the mountain, because we are told that when that war broke, when this Midian started fighting Israel, most of them ran into the mountain tops and built their homes there in the caves, in the mountain clefts, and in the hideouts. So they had run away. There was fear. There was terror. But amidst all those, Gideon was out in the wheat. He was threshing the wind, the wheat in the wine press. Meaning that he was a hard-working man, a man who was strong, a man who is a warrior, a man whom God, God's angel refers to, a warrior. A man amidst all these problems, he is the only one going out to fight, to bring food, to put together things, to work hard so that there is food when that trouble also comes. So that when the Midianite come, they will find nothing but find that he has already packed the food in the wine press. Praise be to God. So this is a very interesting story that we need to understand. And then we have other names like Ophra means dust. Then Oak. Oak is a strong tree, meaning a strong tree. Josh means Lord is support. Then Abiraze, that's a tribe, means my father is help. My father is help. And Gideon means one who hewns down one who hewns down or kneels down or always is going down that is brings things down that is when things increases themselves he brings them down that's how his name works so we are saying that when the angel of the lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah, it means that jesus came and sat under a strong tree called oak at the dust, that is, at the Ophrah. Ophrah means dust. And that one means what? That when someone, when you you are strong, when you are with the Lord, we should brag with things of the Lord. But when we boast among ourselves, when we boast over positions, we boast about our families and whatever we have, God will bring us down to the dust. 
So when Israelites started boasting themselves on how they are and worshiping other goddess or gods, Baal gods, God brought them down into the dust. And from the dust, we see that God is bringing everyone who goes down. When you humble down, God will bring you up. And when you exalt yourself, God will bring you down. And that's how it works. So the Israelites were brought down because of what? That kind of brokenness and big headed and not worshipping God who brought them from Israel, from uh, Egypt to Israel. Praise be to God.